The coordination of uh, skeletal muscle movement involves several regions of the brain and the somatic motor nervous system. If we take a look at the centers in the brain involved in skeletal muscle movement, we need to include, among other regions, the premotor cortex, found in the frontal lobe. We also need to include um, the motor cortex, which is right next to the sensory motor cortex. What's something known as the basal nuclei, nuclei, also sometimes called ganglion, and a closely related structure called the substantia nigra. I'm not going to write that one down. And then also involved in movement is the cerebellum. Motion is is uh, coordinated. The coordination is intricate. It involves a number of these different systems. Once that motion has been initiated, we then send the signal, um, the signal exits the brain being taken or traveling down these neuronal tracks. We can follow one of these tracks here. Let me actually switch to a slightly thicker, thicker uh, line here. If we follow this particular track that I'm outlining in black here, we'll see it will travel, it'll exit the brain into the brain stem. And in the brain stem, we'll reach a portion of the brain stem, the medulla, where we hit what is known as the pyramids. The pyramids in the medulla contain the desiccation of the pyramids, and this is where those motor neurons, most of them I should say, cross over, about 90%-ish cross over. You will note, let me switch colors just so you can kind of see it, uh, this particular branch here that remains lateral, but the rest of them cross in the desiccation of the pyramids, and consequently we end up with the neuronal tract continuing its journey on the contralateral side. Once it reaches the appropriate level of the spinal cord, so we've exited the brain stem, we've proceeded down the spinal cord, once we reach the appropriate area of the spinal cord, and this is going to be different for different parts of the body, for example, the arms, fingers, etc., would be regulated by um, uh, spinal cord sections that are closer to the, or that are superior versus legs and so forth to the inferior portion of the spinal cord, and so we, of course, would have different segments being involved in muscle movement. The tract that descends from the, the upper regions of the spinal cord will then synapse onto another motor neuron. We call the first one the upper motor neuron. And the second one is referred to as the lower motor neuron. You can see this, the motor neuro, lower neuron, the lower motor neuron exits the spinal cord. It's found in the ventral horn, the cell body is found in the ventral horn, it exits the spinal cord and it travels then to wherever the muscle is that it's going to activate. So here's my muscle fiber. Importantly, the lower motor neuron, there's only one. So one neuron that stretches all the way out to the muscle, the effector cell. And sometimes this can be quite long. We can have motor neurons that are as long as six, uh, six feet in some people. Importantly, these motor neurons are highly branched. And we'll talk a little bit more about that importance in a moment. For most of this lecture, I'm going to be focusing, um, in fact, actually anything beyond this slide, I'm going to be focusing exclusively 